In our second demonstration here, we are going to um, create some basic functionality for the application that we designed forms for in our previous demonstration. To start off with, I need to create a text file that contains states. That way I can read states into my application um, without having to write them each time the application loads or having them hard-coded. So I'm going to open up Notepad. I'm going to paste states to it. Now I acquired these states from um, an online resource and all I did was Google US state abbreviations list text and I was able to find lists where I can just simply copy and paste. I'm going to save this as states.txt to the bin debug folder of my application. I'm going to close down notepad. I do not need that anymore. And I'm going to read these states into my application. So I'm just going to right click and view code on my form contact detail form. And the first thing I need to do is actually import the libraries that allow me to read text files. So imports system.io. Need the load procedure here. There we go. Okay, um, and then I'm going to create an array that will store these states. Now, normally I would just read the states right into the combo box because that's the only place I'm going to use them. But for the sake of education on how to use arrays and loops and such, I'm going to read them into the array and then write them from the array. So here I'm going to say dim us states sub negative one as string. And it's an empty array that will be able to store our US states. Next, I'm going to create a sub procedure that will read them from the data file. So private sub read states. And my comment here is just going to be um, read US states from text file to array. All right, the first thing I need to do is actually validate that the states text file exists. So if file.exists states.txt, I don't have to give it a true path because the file is located in the bin debug folder which also means that it is going to be local or relative to the application. And if this equals false, we'll throw a message box at the user. Otherwise, we know that we found the list. Next, we need to declare a stream reader to read the information from the text file. So dim my file as stream reader. And then my file equals open text. Oops. File that open text. States.txt. And then we are going to loop through this file. So do until myfile.peak equals negative 1. So what is going to happen is when you reach the end of file, it's going to return a negative 1. All right, we will have to declare a new element in the array. So I'm going to say read in preserve US states sub US states dot length. And the reason why we're able to do that is because arrays are um, zero based, but length or count is one based. Now we're going to reference the last cell or the new element of the array.
and it's going to equal my file dot read. And it's just going to loop through until we reach the end of that file. After we're done looping, my file that close. And that's it. We should have um, an ability to read from the text file and load it into an array. I'm going to create a new sub procedure. And it's not the greatest name, but load states to combo and load US states to combo box from array. I'm taking the long route out on this. Um, we certainly could have streamlined our code and made this all in one procedure, but for the sake of education, I want to cover loops a little bit better. So here we're going to just say, um, we're first going to clear out the combo box. So CBO state dot items dot clear and then for i is integer equals zero to us states dot length minus one so we're going to refer to every element in the us states array we'll add each item to the combo box so cbo state dot items dot add the US states sub i so the current element. All right. So that should take adding, care of adding the items in the combo box. We of course need to call these sub procedures. The combo box though currently allows the users to edit. That's just a default setting. So I'm going to change drop-down style to drop-down list. That way it will not enable editing. It will only allow them to just select what's in there. All right. The next item that we need to take care of is contact type. Now we've just hard-coded this into our application. We have family, friends, and business. So we'll just enter that in as a collection. We normally would read this from a database or a text file. So I'm going to go to the items collection field. Start off with business, family, friends, that way it's alphabetical. Click OK. And we're going to change the drop down style of this one as well to drop down list. Next, we'll deal with a little bit of uh, form validation. So for example, for first name and last, I'm going to select both of those. I'm going to allow max length 30 characters. Do the same thing for address. For city, I'm going to do 20. Zip code, we're going to do 5. Telephone, um, for right now, We'll do 12. Email, we're going to make 50. And all I'm doing is clicking on the field and modifying the max length. And the other fields, of course, you get to select from a drop down box. When the user clicks close, we're just going to say v.close. Later on, we can add some code to make sure that if they haven't saved something, that it'll ask them to save. And speaking of under save, we are going to validate um, user input and save contact. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to make sure that they've entered in information in each one of these fields. So here, if txt first name dot text, actually do text length, um, 
is less than 1, then, I'm sorry, that's a greater than 1, less than 1, or I guess we could simply say equal to 0, then we can throw a message back to the user. And we'll set focus back to the first same text box. And we're going to go through and do this for the remainder um, of the fields. So we're going to make sure that they enter something in for each field. We're going to do this by using an else if. And that way, if they do not enter any of the fields and click save, it will not give them you know, six or seven message boxes. It will only give them one. I did copy and paste because all I'm changing is to last name. All right, address.txt link equals zero, then message box.show. Please enter an address. Oops. I'm going to just copy and paste for city. And modify the appropriate fields. Now for state, it's a combo box. So we're checking to see if the selected index equals a negative one. If it does, that means that they have not selected a state. zip code we're just going to do a little copy and paste here telephone email Some, please enter an email address. And make sure you change what you're setting focus to. Next, we're going to refer to contact type. So I'm going to go back to my CBO state. Paste that. And then DTE birth date. I'm going to check if the value equals zero. Whoops. Actually, we're just going to check for text. Dot text equals nothing. Then we'll throw a message box. Otherwise, information validates OK to save. All right. Um, we can test our application and at least see does it load the state, does it load the contact type, and does it validate. So I'm going to modify the properties of my project. Right click on my project, properties, and I need to change my startup form to contact detail. Save and run. I hope you notice that this shouldn't work because we never call their sub procedures. 
So we need to call our sub procedures to load state. Click close, which should work. I'm going to double click on the form. I'm going to say call. Um, if I can remember the name of my sub procedures. Read states and load states to combo. Drop down box, and there's my list of states. Contact type. I can enter in some information. We don't do the most validation here. You'll notice that I left zip code empty. I'll click save. Please enter a zip code. Good. I'll leave two fields empty here. Last name and address. If I click save, please enter a last name. You notice that it takes me right there. Please enter an address. It takes me right to it. I click save once all information is entered and the application operates. All right, in this demonstration, we worked with um, arrays, adding items to them, reading from them, reading from text files, loops, and decisions. And that concludes this demonstration.